It might be the end of the year, but 2024 has given PowerPC fans one last wonderful gift. A new release of Adelie Linux. Today we're installing a completely modern Linux on some Power Macs that have no business running a completely modern Linux. It's Adelie Beta 6, so stay tuned. And if you think an acceptable power to performance ratio is yes, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We have a long history with Adelie Linux here on the channel. In one of my earliest videos, we did a manual install of Adelie on an iMac G3. You see, Adelie is special. Most Linux distros have long since abandoned compiling for PowerPC Macintosh, but Adelie, they actually offer live environments for both 32-bit and 64-bit PowerPC Mac, meaning you can actually burn a disk, pop it into your Mac, and see if it works. In the previous Beta 5, the PowerPC installer didn't quite work from the live environment, but this new Beta 6 promises to fix that. So let's fire up some old Macs and give this new Adelie Beta 6 a try. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all of your PCB assembly, prototyping, fabrication, and 3D printing needs. Right now, PCBWay is running their Christmas sale. Save up to 50%. There are tons of great coupons and a free prototype for Christmas themed design promotion, where you can get up to a $20 discount on themed designs. PCBWay recently sent me a goodie box, and inside was this wonderful plaque. I'm honestly really honored by this. Thank you so much. PCBWay has been a partner with my channel since practically the beginning. You've all done so much with the retro computing community, and you're all just really genuinely lovely people. So as always, if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope we'll give PCBWay.com a try. So here are the machines we'll be testing this out on. For PowerPC 64, I've got my quad-core PowerMac G5 and an iMac G5, and for 32-bit, I have my PowerBook G4 Titanium. Now, I have done a test install already on the iMac G5, just to make sure that it was actually possible with Adelie Beta 6, and it is, though with some caveats. So I think we'll start with a walkthrough of an install. I can show you some of the gotchas, in case you wanna do this yourself. And we'll start with the most powerful Power Mac I own, the Quad-Core G5, a machine so powerful it actually came water-cooled from the factory. Wait a minute, there's no hard drive in here. Whatever shall we do? Oh yeah, it's time for the wheel of SSDs. What are we gonna get this time? We have one ourselves, a 240 gigabyte Micron SSD, and I'm just guessing here, but I believe this at one point held a Linux install. And we will pair the Aluminium Beast with a very 2000s Apple Studio display. I'll hold down Option on the keyboard to boot into the boot picker. I've got my totally appropriate, not the correct optical drive hanging out the side here. And I'm gonna chuck in the Adelie Mate PPC64 live environment disc. And there it is, CD icon with the penguin in the corner. And we will boot that. Now there we go, GNU Grub. We will start the first option, Adelie Linux Live. All right, and here we are in the beautiful Mate live environment. And I guess I should start with the first caveat. Mate is the only one that I could get to boot successfully into the live environment. Adelie KDE and XFCE, KWIN would crash immediately upon getting to the live environment, and it would not fully load. That said, let's do a quick install. First thing I wanna do is make sure the time and date are correct. If they were not correct, we would need to go into the Mate terminal and set it so that it doesn't fail when it tries to download stuff from the repository during install. Yeah, and Adelie has this lovely graphical installer, I believe it's called Horizon, and well, it's basically an install wizard and it works pretty well. 
All right, we will erase the whole disk, of course. We are connected to the internet via Ethernet Zero. Set our time zone here for New York. We will call this Quad G5. Install a bootloader. Passphrase is gonna be something very complex and secure. Passphrase again, definitely not just action retro. So in beta five, this would generally fail at configure hard disks, and you'd have to do a manual partitioning to make sure the Apple bootloader is correctly installed, but now it should work. Oh yeah, we configured the hard drive and now we are installing software. And look at that, we are successfully installed. Yeah, we can finish here and now we can do a quick reboot, although there actually is another sort of manual step we have to do. I'm going to restart this and then immediately after the chime, I'm gonna hold command option OF to boot into open firmware. And now we have to tell open firmware to actually boot from that install, but we can do device slash and then LS. And we're going to look for the one that has a drive on it under PCI. And here I found it, K2 SATA root, K2 SATA, we have disk zero. And that is going to be where our install is. Take a quick picture here. So now we can confirm that our install exists there by doing a DIR on the long string pointing to it. And yeah, check it out. There is grub, grub config, set that as the boot device. Can do set env boot device grub. And then I'm just gonna tell it to boot from this. Do boot and then that long string. Oh yeah, there's Grub. There is our Adley install. <laughs> A little bit of open firmware finagling, but that's the fun part. Oh yeah, here we are. Let's log in with my super secure password. And there it is. Glorious, glorious Mate. Looking beautiful as ever. Oh yeah, look at this. Smooth as silk. This uses the APK package manager, of course. APK update, APK add fast fetch. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Adelie Endless Summer 1.0 beta six for PowerPC 64. We are running kernel 6.6.58 MC2 easy and a whopping 16 gigs of RAM. This is almost a modern computer now. Okay, now what I'm really excited about here is some of the software that's pre-installed including, check it out, we have Firefox compiled for PowerPC 64. And apparently Firefox crashed. All right, let's start up the Mate terminal and try to run this from the command line and see what went wrong. libpci is missing and then a segmentation fault. All right, let's see here. All right, apk add pci. Utils dev. Let's try Firefox again. Segmentation fault. Okay, so <laughs> unfortunately, Firefox does not work on here. Let's uh, let's install an alternative. An Arctic Fox technically should give us a better browsing experience because it was built with old hardware in mind. Do a quick DuckDuckGo search for Arctic Fox. Oh no, it crashed. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, we have the NetSurf browser. Let's see if this works. It does. Although not nearly as modern of a web browsing experience. Okay, something else that we always try. Let's compile Classic Cube, which of course is the free and open classic Minecraft clone written in C, which should run on just about anything. All right, we'll clone the classic cube repository. Let's try to build this. Classic cube crashed. Reason, requested graphics mode is not available. Ah, well, we are having all sorts of fun Linuxy problems here. All right, switching over to the less powerful, but still very cool, 
final generation iMac G5, the only one with a built-in webcam. Here is our obligatory fast fetch screenshot showing our single PowerPC 750FX at 2.1 gigahertz. And I assume that Firefox will also not work on here. Yep, we've got that same segmentation fault. Let's add Arctic Fox instead. Yeah, just as before, Arctic Fox launches. Let's try you know, frogfind.com. Oh my God, it worked. We loaded frogfind. Wait a minute. Why on earth would Arctic Fox work here and not on the quad G5? Oh, Google crashed it, okay. Yeah, so FrogFind is an incredibly simplistic website, so I assume something in the complexity of Google causes this to crash. Oh, there's a bit more lag on this desktop. Oh, geez, yeah, those four CPUs really come in handy. And for the 32-bit version, this is my beloved Titanium PowerBook G4. I think this is one of the most interesting Apple products because it was so far ahead of its time. Oh yeah, there's that beautiful Mate live environment. Oh my goodness, the brightness keys work. Look at that. Sound keys work, though I don't think there is any sound. I don't know, I think there is. Look at that. Ah, check it out. It even understands that there's a battery in here. Oh, it was running off the battery. This wasn't all the way plugged in. And now it's shutting down because the battery died. But it shut down gracefully. I'm amazed that it knew how to do that <laughs> on a PowerBook G4. All right, well, bad news, everybody. I've tried installing this several times on two different hard drives, one a standard spinner and one an IDE SSD. And I've also tried manually partitioning and I just cannot get this to install. It always fails on configuring the hard disk. So maybe it's a problem with this laptop, but I think more likely a problem with the 32-bit installer. In the meantime, at least we can sort of take a look at how well Adelie runs with this live environment here. Obligatory fast fetch screenshot showing us running kernel 6.6.58 on our 0 0.87 gigahertz CPU. All right, let's see if we can fit Arctic Fox into this live environment. On the 32-bit version of Adelie, there is no option for Firefox. You only have Arctic Fox. Well, let's start with Frog Find and see if it can render that. Oh yeah, look at that. It sure can. Yeah, it's not fast, but it does work. Now let's see if it crashes on a more complex website like it did in 64-bit. So, google.com. And yep, segmentation fault. Uh, that's a shame. I do wonder if recompiling this stuff ourselves would fix whatever's going wrong here. So that is fun with Adelie Linux on PowerPC Macintosh. And yeah, I know we ran into some fun Linux problems, but still, I'm extremely grateful that the Adelie team is publishing PowerPC and PowerPC 64 live environments and installers. And it does work, just some systems need a little more help than others. Actually, a lot of systems. I tried it on a whole bunch of my PowerPC 32-bit machines, and it only worked on my PowerBook G4 Titanium. And if you have any suggestions on how to get around some of the bugs that I saw, especially trying to get Firefox going, let me know in the comments down below. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.